Hello and welcome to Sharing Your Great Practice. Now this week I'm at Sutton Park Primary School in Hull where they've been telling us all about the different measures they've implemented to tackle bullying. When the head teacher joined the school in 2006, it was facing a huge challenge, taking children from a nearby school that had closed down. I think the biggest challenge for me was really developing a community where the Sutton Park children and the new children felt like they were all one. Um, so I tried to think of an ethos for the School of Culture, a mission statement that would incorporate all of those children together. The children came up with six core words that embodied the values they wanted to share. What we have is a um, very visual um, signpost in the hall with all the six words on so the children can see them each time they're in assembly. And what we do each half term is we choose one of the words that becomes the focus of what we do in assemblies and also what we do in circle times. And the children become very familiar with the word. Um, we can relate it to current issues that are going on in the world. We can relate it to what's happening in our school or any incidents that have happened. And so the children do start to talk the word all the time around the school. The school invested in an emotional support worker, Lisa Williamson, who works full-time to support children who are unhappy, who are experiencing bullying or bullying others. I think the value for my role within the school, it gives the teachers time to teach. And then I take the problems out of the classroom and deal with them and they can be dealt with at length. So the children are actually making those decisions rather than somebody telling them, right, this is what you're going to do. The children get the chance to make the decisions and work through the problems themselves. She's been key to, to our success really in building good relationships because what we wanted was um, a school where bullying and that sort of behaviour wasn't tolerated or accepted and so she's very proactive in working with children who have been identified as perhaps needing self-esteem boosting. So she chooses groups of children, she does lots of uh, social skills perhaps, um, anger management and children who perhaps just need to be boosted. So she works with those in her room, the nurture room, and she deals with all bullying incidents we have in school too. So the children feel very safe in, in talking about their worries and issues with her. Lisa has what is called a nurture room. This is where the children can come in and they can pick a word of how they're feeling for that day and um, pop it on the board and let me know how they're feeling. They might even leave me a post-it note with it with their name attached if they've done it when I'm not in the room and then I'll go find them and we'll, we'll have a chat about what's, what's happened. Um, sometimes a child might not want to come into school very happy in the morning so we'll come in, grab a bean bag, sit on the floor and read a few books till they've settled and then they'll go off to the classroom quite happy. And see parents in here as well. Parents often come in to chat about problems that they've had at home mm -hmm. um, with the children and will come and have a chat in here as well. Restorative practices are used in this school so those affected by bullying are brought together to resolve problems. Right boys, what's going on on the playground? Well, I was playing football and John came up and kicked the ball away of me and said that I'm useless. How do you think you would feel if he did that to you? Um, work really closely with the children, specifically children that have been bullied. Um, we work on self-esteem, raising their self-esteem so that they've got the confidence to deal with the bullies and, and stand up for themselves basically. And then on the flip side we also deal with the bullies um, in talking to them and making them realise how they are making somebody else feel and how their actions are impacting on the other child. So it's really, really important because we, we do it from both sides of the coin. And outside the nurture room is a post box for children to post their worries if she isn't there. If someone's bullied you on, on the playground yeah. or in the classroom, you would get a piece of paper, write a note down and then post, post it in the post box and then Miss Williamson will check it. And in the playground, one idea grew from the children. It's a buddy bus stop where children who can't find anyone to play with can find a friend. If people are like sat on there and just lonely, some people can stop and think about what, what, how would they feel like if they were on there. So when they've actually worked it out, they would go over there and like ask them if they wanted to play with their friends and then they would make them happy and then they would feel better. Class teachers make use of circle time to focus on ongoing issues to do with behaviour. They're all being trained to use techniques which help to bring out all the children's feelings and more importantly, find a way forward. When people are playing games, 
um, some people aren't letting them join in with it because they say it's just like a two-player game. If you want to implement any of these ideas to tackle anti-bullying, here are some tips from Sutton Park Primary School. Investing in an emotional support worker allows bullying issues to be dealt with more thoroughly and promptly. Never assume the adults have all the answers. Allow children to give their ideas. If you have an anti-bullying mission statement, make sure it comes alive every day so that children understand the meaning behind those words. And never be complacent about bullying because you always can do with reviewing the approaches that you have in place. To find out how you can take part in sharing your great practice, then visit the Teachers TV website and find the Sharing Your Great Practice page.